All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. We're back for a live Grit Iron show as we are every Monday, first Monday of the month. We're live for the Grit Iron show. And as my favorite Denzel Washington actor likes to remind us, if it was easy, everybody would do it. And ease is a greater <laughs> threat to progress than hardship. Well, if it was easy, we'd call it football. We'd yeah. call it football. <laughs> And if you if you see that voice and hear that voice in the room, we are joined by legendary, legendary LSU gymnastics coach, Dee Dee Bro, right here on the Grit Iron Show. Coach, thank you so much Thanks. for joining us on the Grit Iron Show. It's, We're so happy to have you. That's today. my pleasure. I was I was thrilled when uh, Brian uh, Be uh, Barrios at my at LSU. Uh, Brandon Barrios, I'm sorry, when he called and said that y'all had asked me to be on the show. So I'm excited. Well, Coach, on the Grit Iron Show, we celebrate the passion, the perseverance, and the lifestyle of women in sports. And when we think about who has done that at an elite level, right here in our local community, setting an example across the Southeastern Conference and the nation, we're just so fortunate to have you right here in, our, right here in Baton Rouge and with us on the Grit Iron Show. Now, this last fall, you retired after 43 seasons from LSU Gymnastics. Kind of catch folks up on what's been going on in the world of Coach Didi, bro, since you, since you retired from the program. Well, it, my world's got a, lot, a little bit smaller, uh -huh. just, and I think a lot of that's because of COVID and uh, the restrictions. And, you know, I, I can't be a part of the, the, the practice thing at LSU. I can't be a part of a whole lot of what's going on. And I'm supposed to be doing speaking engagements and, you know, doing the things that I did outside of coaching. Um, I think that continued to elevate the gymnastics program. And uh, once the everybody will get their vaccine and <laughs> get your shot <laughs> so we can put people back in our stadiums and in the arenas, uh, it, it'll make a huge difference for what we're doing at LSU. Well, Coach, I'm a, I'm a cancer thriver, as I like to mm -hmm. say. I'm still going through treatment for breast cancer. Oh, wow. And as a part of that immune compromised group, trust me, we get, we're getting shots we're getting in arms shots. so that we can get yeah. back, so that we can get back to normal. And for those of you that are joining us, uh, my name is Whitney, bro. I forgot to even introduce myself today. I'm so excited <laughs> to have Coach Bro with us. Whitney. Yeah, I knew exactly who you, you were. Did, you <laughs> knew, and that was important. But for those that are watching us live out on YouTube and on Facebook, I'm also joined by Abby Alonzo, our student co-host. Abby is one of the best and brightest coming out of the Manship School over at LSU. Well, I can't say enough good things about the Manship School and uh, what they do for LSU. And really? um, I love the, the Saturdays when you'll have me come over there and yep. talk about football. All of it. They give us so many opportunities, yep. this being one of them. So I'm very thankful to be there. <laughs> And then we've also got Lloyd Courtney behind the mic and Hallie and Sarah, who are also joining us. So we've got an amazing team that's joined us today. And again, we're so fortunate to have Coach Bro. Now, now we've done a couple of digging into a couple of storylines <laughs> here, but Abby actually had the opportunity to touch base with some of the current gymnasts on this year's team. And they had oh, wow. some questions that they wanted to throw out at, <laughs> okay. at you for today's show. Oh, yeah. So they miss you. I, I texted Christina and I was like, hey, like, give me some scoop. And she sent me a list of questions. <laughs> I guess they all, like, in Utah this past weekend just kind of sat down and were like, what should we ask her? So they did want to know what you miss most about coaching them and how weird it is that gymnastics doesn't consume most of your life anymore. Well, I think the, the thing that I miss about the job mm -hmm. is the discipline of the the – commitment on my time and I know I, where I have to be at a specific time and what I have to do and the planning of practice and the preparation but it's also the intricate one-on-one -on -one things like oh coach today today I, I've got to remember that Christine's got to do her leaps and straps right. and I've got to remember that this person's got to do that and so I you know I write it in my notebook and for years I you know keep all these notebooks about our practice regiment so that I can go back and look to see where we were and where we are now mm -hmm. so it's I really miss the the in, the one on one interaction yeah. with with the student athletes Absolutely. with the gymnast, and then the um just the the camaraderie, mm -hmm. and you know I don't miss the the issues. I don't miss <laughs> oh this hurts and that hurts, but it's part of the deal. Right. You know, it's part of what you live with as as an elite level athlete. So you just have to accept that and you know breathe in, breathe out, and move on. Yeah. Um. But I I think it's the day to day discipline that is required and, and, and the interaction with the student athletes. Yeah. Now we've also heard you say that this 2020 team 
might be one of the most talented yeah, that is. has ever that, that has ever come through the LSU gymnastics pro program. What makes this unique group? I mean, and they powered through this weekend yeah. in order to come out on top and head to the NCAA They've finals. They've powered through the last couple of weekends, and then they had adversity. You know, three of the meets prior to their last home victory against. Uh, Missouri, um, they're just from from top to bottom. They're very talented. We're also very young, and I think that twenty twenty is going to. Although it's it's been a great year, and we've had a lot of incredible performances. I think when next year you add on a couple of really outstanding recruits, a year after that, I think that uh, that that Jay is the right guy, right man for the job, and um, just moving this team forward. But from from the the depth we've got on the bench and the depth we have and the talent we have in our top six in each event really sets this team um, aside. Now that, that can't take away from how incredible the last six, six or seven years have right. been for LSU gymnastics. And, and that is, is due to a lot of, a lot of things that uh, have come together, the village that we've created mm -hmm. at LSU. And, and one of the things that we talked about even before we got started today is over your tenure, I mean, you've seen women's gymnastics, but also women in collegiate athletics yeah. e e evolve. And, and from your perspective, looking back, but then also on where we still have room to grow, you, you know, what do you think it's going to take for that next step for, for women's athletics to move to that next level? Well, one of the things I like to say most of all when, when we're met with an a administrative challenge is I'm not going backwards. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> hey, folks, we can make a lot of decisions here, but we're not going backwards. Yeah. And I know where backwards, I know where that was, and I know how hard it was to get here. And, you know, I'm sitting here looking at Skip Bertman's picture on the wall in this man cave. <laughs> um, but With the wood paneling. You know, we've had a, a lot of administrations mm -hmm. at LSU, and I think when, when Skip Bertman became the athletic director, he really began to make some changes that needed to be made. Mm. But the initial, the beginning, goes all the way back to Paul Merle, wow. who was the, chan the chancellor at LSU when I was hired. And I've had the pleasure through the years, and he is sadly deceased. And um, I mean, I've had the pleasure over the last few years to, to talk to him a lot about the history of women's athletics at LSU because he was the guy. And he's the one that went to the conference office for the meetings, and he's the one that said LSU will have women's athletics and it, we will be a unified department. And he sent Pat Newman, who was in his office in Adena Women's Staff, Pat Newman down to coordinate that happening at LSU and making it happen right. And there were a lot of growing pains, a lot of, well, if we give this to the women, that means we have to take it away from the men. And that's not, that was never the truth and that was never the intent. But um, having, having Dr. Merrill write the things that he's written and, and send me the things that he has about the history of women's athletics, um, I gave a lot of credit to a lot of people, but the, the main credit, you know, really goes down to his tenacity and his willingness to do the right thing. And, you know, Title IX was signed into law in 1972. And, you know, and I don't know a lot of things about the former President Nixon, except his wave when he said goodbye. <laughs> but when he put the pen to paper on that law, it's changed a lot of lives for a lot of, a lot of women throughout throughout history. Absolutely. And, and, and then where do we go from here, Coach? I mean, I mean, what do you think has to happen in the next five to ten years in order for women's athletics to take that next step? I think that we need to, we need to get through COVID, yeah. and we need to stop saying, oh, it's because of COVID. You know, we need to stop saying that. We, just, we need to move forward and do what it takes to get these programs back in the forward motion that they were in before. And I, I look at the sport of gymnastics and I, and I see how much incredible talent there is on the floor um, just in the, in the rotation that we were in um, Saturday night yeah. in the championship. So there's, there's great talent out there and there's great coaches out there, but never ever in the, the young coaches that are taking the places of people like Pat Summit. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. Sarah Patterson, Suzanne Yachlin, you know, all of these great coaches, myself, you, you have to remember you're not going to don't go backwards mm -hmm. don't even look back no nope. you know you need to you need to to plan your future preserve your past but you need to plan that future and continue to move forward young coaches have to remember how we got where we are and it, and it wasn't by being shrinking violets it wasn't by you know, oh, oh, complaining what you're not having. You know, always go in with a plan B and always know if a plan A 
You're not going to get that, but you better have a plan B ready to go. You better try to be one step beyond the person that's that your adversary is. And and, and that's the definition of grit. Yeah. And that's exactly yeah. why we call this show Grit Iron <laughs> instead of Grit Iron is because we're celebrating women who have grit, who have seen obstacles mm-hmm. and who have overcome them and who are ready to keep moving through them and yeah. power through it. Now, I also heard that one of your mantras while you were the coach at LSU was everything counts. Well, everything does count. Now, I got that from a book that Skip Berman gave me. Uh-huh. And <laughs> It's everything. Everything counts. How you dress, how you present yourself, how you walk into a classroom, how you present yourself to that instructor. Because at the end of the semester, the difference between a, a B and an A minus, it may be that attitude, mm-hmm. you know. So, you know, everything counts. Your, your, your attitude, your discipline, your, how you approach everything that you do. You, you know, and it, it's an incredible, incredible book, but it's it's also a fabulous mantra. And uh, when I'm invited to speak, a lot of times that's what I, I speak about. And then that not only applies to athletics, because some of our listeners, as I like to call us, you know, we're armchair athletes, yeah. or you know, <laughs> yeah, you know, but because you can then take those same principles and apply them into what you do from a leadership mm-hmm. perspective at, at work. Yeah. In that, whatever you do, put your best foot forward each and every time. Yeah, you know, and it, and it, the perception <clears throat> that that you give is the reality, you know, the perception that, you know, anybody gives in that first impression or the, the, the perception of, you know, somebody is, you know, somebody is lazy, right? Well, that, that might be the perception, but maybe that person isn't challenged. Maybe that person needs something to push them beyond, um, where they are right now. And sometimes it takes a little bit of a of a force in order to help you well, get there. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Coach. You also wrote in your farewell letter, "Nothing great ever comes without enthusiasm." Or what was it? Nothing great has ever been achieved without enthusiasm. Right. When obstacles face you or things get tough, how do you muster up and keep that enthusiasm? Um, you know, back going to go back to the word, you know, grit. Mm-hmm. You know, the the word passion, the word pride and purpose. If, if you a- approach something with enthusiasm, everybody around you is going to, well, wow, you know, that, that must be a real, that must be a good thing. You know, it's kind of like the old, you know, painting the fence and making it look like it's fun. But if you approach it with enthusiasm, people are, people are going to be more inclined to want to be a part right. of that positive motion. And, um, you know, the, the, it's the fire in your belly and it's what pushes you forward to, to, do something because you believe in, and I believe in the, in the power of athletics. I believe in the power of uh, self-confidence and, and, and what you, what you can achieve, achieve. But you know, the power of athletics isn't just about the power of football. Mm-hmm. It's about the power of baseball and the power of softball. It's the, about the power of volleyball, the power of soccer, the power of golf. And you know, all of those, all of those sports create a lot of energy and a lot of enthusiasm. And if, if the coaches and the athletes in those programs aren't the most excited ones about it, then move over and let somebody who is excited take charge. Absolutely. Where do you, where does your grit come from though? Well, where, where does it come from in your belly? What was the experience that, 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 that led you to, to, to have that, 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 that level of energy towards your, your work? Well, you know, I, I grew up in Donaldsonville and, um, there was no gymnastics. There was no women's sports there. We could play summer softball. Or we could, you know, swim in a summer league um, at, at, the, at the club. But um, the, the, the truth is, I was one of eight kids, and my parents made a tremendous sacrifice for me to do gymnastics. And um, Sherry Harris came from Pal Moe's dance studio and taught a little program in Donaldsonville. And it was included acrobatics. And I really loved that part of it. And for me to advance... Um, Miss Sherry told Mama, she said, you really need to bring her to Baton Rouge if she's going to be able to do anything in gymnastics. We're starting a program. So I came over here with Pal Moe's and uh, Arnold D. Domenico. We called him Smoo. And then I outgrew that program and went to Hammond. Vanny Edwards was in Hammond coaching the college team. And back then there were really no rules. So I could compete with the college right. team when I was in high school. So it was just the price that my parents paid. And every time Mom would drop me off at 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 the at gymnastics, I would open the door to get out, and and she would say, "You get out of something what you put into it." So yep. get get in there, and, you know. So I mean, it was the constant message, the constant reinforcement, and um, 
it, like I said, there was competition when you got eight kids. There was competition, you know, just to get, imagine. yeah, you know, <laughs> mom was going to cook beef stew on a Monday. And, you know, if I didn't, if I didn't get home in time or whatever, I was going to have to eat the potatoes because there was going to be no carrots and no meat. <laughs> Everybody was picking over. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, you know, and, and Whitney, you grew up with a bunch of bros and I grew up with I a bunch sure of did. bros. Yeah. Yeah. You know how they're going to eat. They're going <laughs> to run through it. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's competition. Everything is a competition. True. That's true. I almost, I, I even sometimes tell my son, cause he's, you know, although his last name isn't bro, I remind him, I'm like, you're made of bro DNA. <laughs> and that means that you got to be relentless, yeah. but you got to be humble mm-hmm. at the same time. You got to have both if you want to yeah. if you want to be successful. Now, coach, in your tenure, there were many appearances in the NCAA finals. Yeah. Runners up. I mean, I remember watching Oklahoma in that most recent yeah. I- experience. It was it was almost as though that NCAA championship was a bit elusive. In, it was. In, in it way. was. It was. But you know, when when you leave the 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 last performer on the floor, and it's coming down to the last performer um, for each team. Then and your last performer does her very best, and their last performer does her very best, and they inch you out by it. the difference in our sport and winning and losing is this much. Then you cannot walk away from that feeling like you lost. Mm-hmm. Right. You have to walk away feeling like they were just that much better than us, and I'm going to take a lot of pride in second place. You know, we we won the conference championship like three times in a row, run, won the season, and then we were runner-up to the national champions, runner-up to the national champions. <laughs> you know, so it's coming. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's coming. Right there. And it, the, the, the teams that we had on the floor knew how to win, and I watched LSU on Saturday night when Reagan Campbell had to hit a beam routine or we were not going to advance. Reagan Campbell stepped up, and you could see on the look on her face, she was relaxed, and self-confidence is the first prerequisite to great undertakings. And and she said, I got this, and you could it radiated from her. And that's just the same thing when, you know, when Sarah Fan- Finnegan would approach the balance beam. You just had that same, or McKenna Kelly stepped up to floor. You just knew it was going to be there. So, you know, and, you know, Ashley Nat, how many times did she hit her last set on floor or beam and bring it home for the team? So this LSU team has that grit, has that same self-confidence. They're just not putting it all together at the same time. Mm. Now, Coach, you're as you're moving into this new phase, as I, I yeah. read, an LSU ambassador, as we get through COVID, what, what are you hoping to build as a part of your post-coaching legacy? What, what, what are you hoping to spend most of your time doing? Um, I'm supposed to be doing public speaking. I'm supposed sure. to be doing what I'm doing right now. So thank we're, you very much. I feel like I'm earning the honor. <laughs> and you know. we're vaccinated, so we're good <laughs> to go. You. But um, also, um, I'm looking forward to being invited by some of the other coaches to be a part of their village, mm-hmm. to be a part of you know, the, the question and answer of, okay, Nikki, what do we need to do? And, you know, what do you want me to do? How can I help you? And well, did he, we need to do this. We need to do that. And I'm like, okay, Nikki, before we do this, we got to do that. So, it's, I want to be a part of maybe a little bit of a tide change and um, be that be part of that wave that, that brings our, some of our programs back to the prosperity that they one ha- once had. Absolutely. And, and, and sometimes having that sounding board, that thought partner, right. uh, almost a mentor. I mean, let's call it a, a, what it, a, a mentor to kind of help right. develop those ideas. Well, that, 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 that's, what, that's what I'm hoping. And uh, one of our new administrators at LSU, Stephanie Rip, I think is, uh, has, has vision and is, a, is very much a visionary. She, she played college sports. She played volleyball at, Air, at University of Arizona. And I think that she sees that. And I, you know, I'm, I always talk about the village, the people that we had. And, you know, you, you, you get you get aggressive and you get angry and you're like you got to do a better job you got to do this I need you to do this I need you to do that and so sometimes I come across as like abrasive and perception is reality so maybe I am (laughs) that's not necessarily a bad thing though no it's not necessarily a bad thing but um you know if you wear your if you wear your feelings on your sleeve then it might be a bad thing but um it has it has made our gymnastics program um a cut above. And, you know, um, Jay and I, a few years ago, wrote a, a few articles and, and sent it to the college gymnastics coaches. And, and I hope they refer back to those. And it's, it's about how to create a village, how to market, how to promote, um, and how to have your program be in the forefront and be relevant. It's a huge word in, in, in any sport. You want to be relevant on your campus, you know. 
And one of the ways that we heard that you got really relevant on campus, especially with students, <laughs> tell us about how the evolution of Go Tigers and the Chick-fil-A sandwiches <laughs> during LSU Gymnastics Mix. And is that going to continue? Are they a sponsor? I, not of our show, but we do love Chick-fil-A. <laughs> and if they're out there hey. and they want a sponsor, they we can reach out to Chick us. We love Chick-fil-A. One of the marketing guys at LSU, you know, their, their corporate sponsor yeah. and... Um, they said, you know, maybe we could do something with Chick Fil A. You know, what would you? I said, well, you know, everybody, everybody goes to the union and have lunch. Let's let's do something at, at the Chick Fil A place. And so I would would go, and the minute I would hit the steps, I would start talking about, hey, I'm going to go. You know, we're going to go Tigers at the Chick Fil A. Let's go, let's go Tigers at Chick Fil A. Let's go Tigers. At, and the, then all of a sudden, the line got huge, yep. and I would get behind the counter and just talk to the kids when they'd step up. And I'm like, said, you, you got to say, holy cow, I love LSU gymnastics. <laughs> and I said, okay, all right, y'all, everybody in the back, and the kids in the front would say, you got, you got to say, holy cow, I love LSU gymnastics. And the holy cow, I love LSU gymnastics thing just kind of began to go so now when i walk through campus you know the kids are like holy cow coach have a good day. <laughs> you know and you walk in a football stadium and, and the student body recognizes you and you know when for gymnastics this year we they the kids were spread all over the stadium because of the distancing and um i would go up up to see the see the kids and they were just like kids you know our, our students yes. our lsu students but uh it just created an enthusiasm about the sport and about getting in the arena um and about the quality sandwich and <laughs> very, you know, quality. very quality sandwich. but um it, it was just a it was a, a fun experience and and i wasn't just there giving out i was interacting with the kids and asking them where they're from what their major was and you know it's the person that cares about them and they they loved it. I don't know if any of the other sports have done it at LSU, and I think that's the kind of thing that I'm going to be able to encourage Nikki to do and um, Fran. And yeah, and, 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 and Beth. You know, Beth, Beth has three babies at oh, home. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Beth has three babies at home. We need Nikki, to bring Chick-fil-A yeah. to the house for dinner tonight. <laughs> Nikki has a, a, a child at home that's yes. just an absolute – if you want a great show, bring in Nikki and her daughter. Oh, well, because <laughs> that's Fun like that's like coach and baby coach. <laughs> <laughs> they they are an amazing twosome. Oh, yeah, I love it. But because yeah. you built a unique relationship with students on campus, it's something that I mean, I, I, I'm I'm older than our students that are with us. I'm about 15 years. They're they're senior as far as my time on campus. But even remembering back to the students, Ashley Claire Carney that was on the teams. I mean, the, the, the presence of LSU gymnastics always felt like a place where you could be yourself, yeah. but also where everyone w was accepted as part of your program and, and the legacy that you created on campus. But I have to ask you, for everything that you've given to LSU, what's one thing that you look back on and you say LSU gave to you? Oh, LSU gave me opportunity. You know, um, back when they hired me, there was no gymnastics training center. There was no gymnastics place. Were they practicing in a basement at the time? Someone well, was saying. Well, when they when they hired me, the women were in an old women's gym that's now being demolished. But I've looked at that thing for forty three years, and it was a total eyesore. And they they wanted me to renovate that old facility for the gymnastics training center. And uh, Chancellor it was Chancellor Martin at the time said, "Dee Dee, that thing is so going to be so hung up. You'll still be fighting in court." To, to do what you want to do in there and get the asbestos out. But people are not going to cooperate with, with us turning that in. She said, go for a standalone facility and you'll have a lot more success. But the, the, whole, the, the whole growth of, of women's gymnastics is because of the support that we've had from Bill Bankhead, Ernie Hill, Kathy Hill, um, so many people that have contributed, Pat Newman, who contributed, fought battles. I'm talking about take your saber out and, and start, you know, slashing and got fired because of her stance that she took for women's athletics at LSU. So, you know, there, there's a lot of people that fought a lot of battles to help us just survive. I mean, I had two times in my, in my 43 years, athletic directors wanted to drop the sport of women's gymnastics. And, um, and you know, at one time, at one point, somebody called me and said, Didi, he's, he's going to call you to come across the street because he's going to drop the sport. Don't go across <laughs> don't go the street. The <laughs> <laughs> don't answer the phone and don't go across the street. I mean, that, that kind that of close. help and support, that close. Yeah. Wow. wow. 
Well, Coach Bro, we are so grateful that you joined us today. Is it over? It, 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 would well, you like I, to stay? Because you can stay so even longer. <laughs> well, tell us. I mean, we've got a lot more questions, but we Did wanted it? to be respectful of no. your time because I told Brandon that we would be on time no, and getting you out I, of here. Really, I have no place to go. <laughs> well, 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 Coach. I mean, well, we can certainly keep going. There's no doubt about that. If you could go back and do anything different, though, oh, wow. as you now, if you since you're letting me go and dig and deep, if you could go back and do anything anything different because that's one thing that I, I currently work in corporate America and we always talk about reflective leadership uh -huh. and taking the time pausing to ask yourself those questions but as you think back is there anything in any moment that you think back on and you're like I, I would do this different um I, I think I would through through the history of of my my tenure at LSU I would do a better job of, of vetting and interviewing and searching out assistant coaches because when I look at what I what I had um, in the end that's if I'd have had that quality of a staff early on you know we would have done better but at the same time I had a lot of administrators that were tearing us down really you know trying to take to knock our feet out from under us so we would not prosper would not um, be deserving of, of a higher status and more salary and more scholarships and better travel. So, you know, that, that's kind of an itch and scratch thing. Could I have done that? I think I could have, um, but that's just the hindsight. And then, you know, maybe going back, because, you know, you always make mistakes. You do, you do a great job recruiting, and sometimes you recruit student-athletes that just not a fit. Sure. You know, and there was not a transfer portal, and, you know, if you if – you, Somebody transferred, they had to sit out a year. So there were a lot of negatives to kids not making it in your program. So I think if I would have um, maybe made one more trip, mm. maybe gone one more time to, to watch her train or watch her, you know, sit sit in the house and have a one, more one-on-one, -on -one, maybe I would have made some better choices along the way, along the way. you know. Yeah. Um, and then to self-reflect, I think that um, prayerful patience I think that when I was young and, and, and coaching and very, very aggressive and doing everything I could to, to, to save the program but continue to, to push it up, um, I think that I probably could have been a little more prayerfully patient in working with the people around me. But, um, you know, all of that is hindsight. And I think that, you know, when, when I was able to, to, to get Bob Moore to LSU and, and keep him here. And then, you know, recruited Ashley Claire Kearney and recruited Susan Jackson and those, those kids, but April Burkholder. And I think was a real, you know, April Burkholder came to LSU the same time uh, Simone Augustus came on a basketball team. Yeah, something like that. And, and both the programs really began to elevate themselves, um, not on the backs of those kids, but with those kids talent and enthusiasm for what, what they were doing. Cause they, they were, really, really close as far as their uh, piercing focus on being individually successful. And, and you talked about recruiting, and a lot of times, I mean, we hear so much about recruiting in the space of basketball or in football. Mm -hmm. what, what, what does recruiting look like in the world of gymnastics? We have a lot of moms that listen yeah. to our show and that are interested in learning more, moms of daughters, boys as well. Mm -hmm. But what, what, what is different about recruiting in gymnastics? Well, it's really, it's really not that different okay. because you're, you're, you're selling the education, you're selling the opportunity to come to a place like LSU that just eats and breathes athletics. And there's so much enthusiasm on campus, you know, when, when things are really going well, there's so much enthusiasm and, and the sport program. And, and for us, it's the, it's the window that people, you know, pull the shades back and look into our programs and, and, oh, it's so exciting at LSU. I want to go to LSU. And that's just the general student population. Right. So student athletes want to come and be a part of that whole family, that whole family of excitement. And now that, you know, we, we have now a, a great nutrition center for our student athletes. And, you know, so many things were done in the last 10 to 12 years. And um, it just really makes a difference. Our facilities were, were upgraded in the last 10 years and our training center and kids want to come and, and they, they see that training center on TV and they want to come visit our campus. They want to come see that. And um, then, you know, the, the coaching staff, the people that are, that are come together every day to work with these kids, the trainers, the, the strength coaches, the nutritionists, that's part of your staff. And you don't see that. All you see is the head coach, but there's so many people behind the scenes and the, the village and the people that we've been able to, to keep and, and support our student-athletes is what drives 
kids. It's like, you know, talking about the quality of the manship program and the reputation of that, of that program. Those are the things that are so critically important that, you know, the, the whole picture of higher education has to be, has to be protected, has to, we have to take care of it because we went through eight years of decimation of higher education and the trickle down that, that all these departments felt when they were just slashing and just taken away and taken away. And now, you know, we've had six years, seven years now of uh, higher education being elevated, money being put back into higher education. I, I think our governor cares deeply about the quality experience that our student athletes have and our student bodies have on all of our campuses. And I don't know if you know Dr. Reed, but that would be a good person for you to have on your show. Dr. Hi, Kim. Yeah, she's, Kim, yep. she is. She's amazing. <laughs> she's amazing. But the the care and the compassion that people have that that these people now have for higher education and it's not about what we can take away it's what we can give to them and the village that then surrounds oh, yeah, the, the community exactly and, and, and like you said not just our student athletes but our students because mm-hmm. the future of this state is yeah. certainly going to depend on what, what what type of young people are we exactly. bringing up what skill sets yeah. do they have that they can yeah. contribute you, to the, you to look the at the great programs that we have at southeastern and southern the yeah. nursing programs and all of that we've got to support all of the universities you know through taxes Absolutely. through tuition you know our tops program is amazing but that's a that's a, a state supported program so we have got to be excited about what we're offering our young people and continue to offer it with great quality great great teachers great instructors uh great researchers and you know we've got so much going for us at lsu and sometimes we forget how great we are Mm -hmm. you know our brand is so good we forget the great job that we're doing and in ocean research and I mean, everything that's totally different on. from any anybody no nobody else has research yeah. like that that's happening yes. that's happening right yes. here and in our, our ag school and just everything that's so positive and what's going on at lsu and 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 lafayette i mean they're they're thriving just because of the support that's given at the government level to higher education now, are you telling me, Coach, that there's not a run for office in your future? <laughs> because, I, I mean, because we could start the campaign if you'd like good. to announce <laughs> today. Cause... No, I don't think so. I... <laughs> That but happens I in very, our family, too, though, you I know. know. I know, <laughs> I know. But, you know, there, there are three important words that we always have to have to talk about, and you've, you've mentioned one or two of them. But, you know, we have to be – we have to have pride. We have to be prideful about what – we're doing about why we do what we do. You have to have pride in it. You're, you're a student at, at Southeastern and you're in a nursing school. Why are you there? Be proud of what you're doing. We have to, we have to have purpose. You have to, your feet hit the ground and you better start running every day because you're either going to eat or be eaten, you know? So, you know, it's just what we do and then passion and purpose and pride. I mean, they're just, we have to be passionate about, why am I teaching English at LSU? Well, because when that person goes to interview for a job, please make sure their verbs are in the right place. <laughs> you know? But it's just so important yeah. what, you know, what everybody's doing to contribute to, to the future of the state of Louisiana. It, it's critical. And for those of us who have left and come back, I've done that already. <laughs> you know, it, 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 there's no place like home. There's right. no place like home. And once you get back home and you feel the camaraderie and the, 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 the village that surrounds you, yeah. you know, you, 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 you're not going to find that in very many places uh, around the country. I no, learned that not, the hard way. <laughs> not, not, with the, not with the passion mm-hmm. and, and the absolute pride that uh, I think the people of Louisiana have about what we do and, and what we represent. You know, and then I look at all the outstanding, you know, we, you know the outstanding female athletes we have at LSU, all, all of them that are just examples of the price that they paid to get where they are and they continue to, to continue to go. And, you know, I talked to the soccer team a couple of weeks ago and, you know, um, I said it's so important that when you see somebody out on the street and they've got an LSU stuff, you see them in the airport, go Tigers, go Tigers. Because the last thing I want to see is somebody in the in the airport with an elephant on their head and, you know, they go, Roll Tide. No, 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 no. Roll Tide. I, mean, no, I, w- I want to hear Go Tigers all Everywhere. over. And so I see them on campus and it's like, Go Tigers. Go Tigers. Remind them. Yeah. You know, so they're, they're you know, the, the kids are pride. They have a lot of pride. And I just can't wait for this thing to open back up. But so that we can put 2,000 people in our soccer stadium. We can put five or 6,000 people in the PMAC to watch women's basketball again. We can get 
our fans to wake up and realize what a fun sport college volleyball is. I mean, it's so exciting. So, you know, there's just so much we have to offer. And, you know, we've got one of the finest golf programs in the country. And I know that a lot of people play golf. Let's, let's go out and, you know, watch them when we have tournaments and our tennis complex is, is second to none. It's absolutely fabulous. And, you know, so we've, we've just got so many great things going on and we've already talked about the fabulous manship program so <laughs> beach volleyball too i've become a fan oh of my the God. Beach volleyball did i team. leave nationally Russell? ranked <laughs> beach volleyball they're team. not just re- nationally ranked they're like the best in the country best yeah, ever. I yeah mean, so if we we open that thing back up it's it's gonna be it's gonna be fabulous you know um I'm hypercritical when I go to an event I'm I'm, I'm I, can't, I can't sit and watch the competition of the event because I'm going Oh, that needs to, we need to do this. We need to do that. We need to do this. <laughs> and I, the other day I was there and, and I saw the umbrellas and the umbrellas were the color of the sand. And I'm like, I went to see our sports properties. I'm Lance, we got to do something about these umbrellas at beach volleyball. <laughs> he said, what do you mean? I said, we need tiger logos. We need bright white umbrellas with logos on it. We need to sell our umbrellas. Yes. So if anybody out there wants we'll umbrella stop. signage, but um, maybe we'll have to get the gridiron show on the umbrellas. <laughs> yeah, there you go. But you know, it's just it's important that it that that we protect our brand and um, but not just protect it, but we have to work to make our brand shine. And find those opportunities, mm-hmm. those little opportunities right. that, that, that come about. Now, Coach, one question that we do ask all guests that appear on the Grit Iron Show, because we're all about creating community. We're about learning right. from others and getting better. When you think about a woman or women that you admire or have admired in your career that have grit, who, who comes to mind for you? <laughs> Rosa Parks mm. and the great Miss Pittman. Okay. And then, you know, and I, 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 kids, I had a third grade class come to, uh, to the gym, to tour the gym from, from you high. And they were sitting there and they asked me that question and I just like, well, shoot, I mean that it's those two women. And they, they looked at me and went, oh, we know them. That's, <laughs> and, and then they started telling me about these, these two incredible women, you know, because, um, Life serves your lemons, and you can either make lemonade or you can sit around and whine about it. And these two women really had lives of lemons, and they they said, you know what, no more. And then it was the first followers that picked themselves up and followed them and and made a difference in their lives. So, you know, I, I get asked that question, and... Um, those, they, Those two. Google them and look at the quotes and look at the things that uh, they have said through life. It's just, it's amazing. And you're amazing. Well, and we're, okay, again, yeah. we're, we are so grateful that you said yes to being here with us this morning. I did, did I have a choice? You, you did. You <laughs> I could have said no. You, you could have said no. But but, 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 so. I, but but the way I worded the email, I was like, please, very, very, very much so, please. Remember, I'm your cousin. <laughs> right, right. Okay. We're cousins. We're, and I may have even slipped that in there somewhere <laughs> in the email. But to, to, to have you continue to be such a guiding light and, and a an example for all of us in this community, thank you. Thank you. Well, thank look, you for all I that you I'll tell you doing. what. Girls, if y'all ask anybody else at LSU and you don't get an immediate enthusiastic yes, call me. Sounds like a plan because we've got your cell number. <laughs> call me. But I'm telling you, a great show would be Nikki and her daughter. And, and just a day in the life of Beth Torino with those three with the kids. the three. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Well, we will we will certainly be reaching out because that's one thing we do is we do follow up whenever we get, well, whenever we hear things like and that. And I'm telling you what, it's been a pleasure being here. Y'all are great. And did you have any more questions you from got the any team? More from Abby? We covered it all. <laughs> just sitting here enamored with what you were saying. Everything you said just, like, hit the nail on the head in every aspect. I'm, like, infatuated. <laughs> to but yeah. And Abby's got a really cool segment that's coming up as soon as we come back from commercial break. So we're going to yes. be counting down our top do. ten favorite gridiron show sports oh, couples great. as soon as we come back <laughs> from commercial break. But we certainly appreciate thank you, Thank y'all, Coach and Bro thank y'all for here. what you're doing and the message that you're spreading. And I've enjoyed watching your show. See, I knew Rohan was on the See? show. Yeah. <laughs> well, we appreciate you so much. Coach Didi Bro, legendary LSU thank gymnastics you. coach. We'll be right back with more. Are you self-employed? Then you need to learn about Angel Oak's Home Loans Bank Statement Program that they're offering, which makes you eligible as a self-employed borrower to purchase or refinance a home without requiring a tax return. If you want to learn more, get in touch with me. Email me, jordy at jordycoladashow.com, to learn about the Bank Statement Loan Program offered by Angel Oak. 
Jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn more. Gearing up for spring and summer down here in South Louisiana and you want to keep your lawn maintained during these sunny seasons, get in touch with our friend Blake Bear over at Bear's Lawn Maintenance where he says, you grow it, I mow it. 225-485-8022. 225-485-8022 is where you can find Bear's Lawn and Maintenance, the official lawn and maintenance company of the undisclosed location. Relief Health, the only way to get your health care in 2021. In your home or on site, Relief is changing how health care is delivered to you. No more doctor's offices, no more waiting rooms. Download the app today, Relief Health, from the Apple or Google app stores. You can get connected to a local doctor in your community or just order a test directly without talking to a doctor. Their COVID tests are live, and right now they have the Moderna vaccine. Online at ReliefHealth.com or download the app from your Apple or Google app stores now. Relief Health, changing the way that health care is brought to you in 2021. It may be the last week of Women's History Month, but the Grit Iron Show with Whitney Bro isn't going anywhere. An all-new episode is now streaming on YouTube and podcast platforms featuring Dr. Lakeitha Poole, Director of Sports Psychology and Counseling for LSU Athletics. We talked with Dr. Poole about the power of flexing your mind if you want to be the best. Don't miss an episode of the Grit Iron Show by subscribing now and follow us on social media at Grit Iron Show. All right, we're back with the Grit Iron Show. A what was I mean? How was that? I I think my jaw was open the whole time. The just whole like time listening. I mean, I couldn't take notes like I wanted to. <laughs> I'm just like, okay, quote after quote after quote, just oh, yeah. life lesson after that, life. That was it to and I get was better. Like, Wait, I have question, 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 <laughs> just because of everything she was saying. <laughs> And then she said she had time. And I was like, well, we can certainly take more time. But Abby, when I think about the last month that we've had on this journey with Grit Iron Show, I mean, we launched on International Women's Day. We've been able to elevate and celebrate the stories of amazing women that are breaking glass ceilings in sports. And every Monday, like we said, every first Monday of the month, we're going to still be here live on right after the Jordi Collada Show and always support, you know, grateful for the support of the Jordi Jordi Collada Show team. Lloyd is still here with us behind the board and we've got some great support with Hallie and Sarah who are helping us keep the social media running. But for folks who want to check out maybe some of our previous episodes, where can they go to find those? Um, Okay, so our first four episodes are on YouTube and Apple Podcasts. So make sure to check those out and keep up with all of the stuff coming out because we've got some stuff planned. And a shout out and a thank you to our guests, Karen McCord, Megan Making Money, Amy Just, and Dr. Lakeitha Poole, all are women with grit who preserve, who preserve with passion on and off the field, persevere with passion on and off the field. You got it. You got it. And of course, we want people to like and subscribe so you can find us on social media at Grit Iron Show. We're on Instagram. We're on Twitter. You can find us. We're on Facebook as well. Live streaming, I think, on Facebook today. We've also got our episodes on YouTube, as Abby said, and on all podcasting services. So if you've not already subscribed, that's like the best way to make sure you get the alerts when a new episode is posted um, and that you can keep up with all of uh, new episodes drop every Monday. We go live the first Monday of every month, but a new episode of the Grit Iron Show drops each and every every Monday with some really exciting interviews. I think coming up this month, we've got some NFL executives that we're going to be featuring um, wives of NFL Super Bowl winning champions, (laughs) um, recruiting analysts. 
sports journalists that are covering some historic moments in sports. So a lot of great and exciting things that are coming up. So folks definitely want to make sure that they subscribe. And we had a great interview today with Coach Didi Bro. All of that's going to be available on our podcast and on our YouTube show as soon as we wrap up today's show. But dreams are also coming true all over the sports world. Abby, I know we had a long list of things we wanted to cover. What are maybe some of your highlights? So the draft is in 24 days. We've got nine Tigers that are going to be, hopefully their names will get called. Um, Pro Day happened last Wednesday, and we had some pretty pretty nice results. You know, Jamar Chase blew everyone away with his of performance. Course. I don't know why that was a, such a surprise to everyone, as if they didn't expect that. Right. But he had a 41 vertical jump. Good gosh. But that was the second of the day because... Jacoby Stevens had a 42. So they were just leaping yeah. all over like, the place. You should see the hype videos on LSU's Instagram page. Like, they are, like they hit all the... It well, was all of them. Yeah, there was nothing, was less, nothing no, left to grab. That was it. And then the 40-yard 40, the 40 dash times, uh-huh. I mean, let's see. Terrace Marshall and Jamar Chase both had 4.38 seconds. Um, Jacoby ran a 4.5. And Racy McMath ran a 4.34 lightning speed you know i never forget coach o, he one, one time i heard him in an interview say one of the first things that he does whenever he gets to uh you know high school campus pre-covid of course <laughs> you know he asked you know who are the kids that not only play football but who's on the track team yes. he's like i want to be the fastest yeah. team in the sec and they continue to prove it in, in pro day and and now from here they go to the nfl draft yep. which will happen in cleveland how many days until i mean it's got to be coming soon 24 and, days oh, it starts on april 29th yep and when you think about all of the hard work that these students have put in, these student athletes, they're athletes now, they're professional athletes. I mean, it's it's for me, it's always a uh, it's a celebration because it's like, man, you've cheered for them for the last three or four years, and now they're getting to see their dreams come true. And you know what? Leonard Fournette wrote an article for the Players Tribune. Mm. And he said, like, this is the moment you're always waiting for. Like, you're waiting to hear your name called and stuff. But you've got to enjoy the journey, too. Because there's never, you're never going to get to a position and then it's just you're just going to be satisfied you're always going to want more so enjoy the journey and I hope these boys are doing that I hope so too I hope so too and the LSU fan base is certainly right there behind them and there's a lot I mean I I would not doubt that the SEC once again will reign supreme during the NFL draft as far as having the the most NFL draft picks because there's just stacked talent everywhere yeah and uh the future of NFL SU NFL SU yeah gosh uh, looking real good right now. As looking we look towards the good. future. Yeah. I know the 2021 season coming up. Spring practice is in full swing. One thing that I just thought was super interesting, random note, is like Florida, the University of Florida, the Gators, like finished their actual spring game yeah. in March. So they're like completely done. I think Dan Mullen is on a, a beach somewhere in Cabo with his family. <laughs> hey. Took an interesting, interesting approach to uh, to spring practice this year. But we got a plug, as always, our folks at Bro Bob. I was looking for my logo on this side. Again, no relation, although we're going to have to co- talk with Coach Bro yeah, and, and see maybe if there is a connection. We're going to, we're going to, I promise we're going to get down to the bottom of it, but they've been great and amazing sponsors for us, continuing to send some great gear for Abby and I to wear on the show. So you can find them at brobody.com and at brobody all over social media. Now, Abby, we teased before Coach Bro left that we had a little grit iron, a little countdown of our own that we wanted to have some fun with today. Yeah. And so what do we, what you got for us, Abby? We're always so serious and we talk stats and deep questions. So I figured um, we should list the top 10 sports couples, the power couples in sports. Powered Um, by the Gridiron Show. Yes, because it's easy to forget that these athletes are people, meaning they date, they have wives, they have kids, like they have normal lives. Absolutely. um, We're going to go ahead and start and... Just a disclaimer, there were too many couples to pick from. So this is what I got. Uh, we got some honorable mentions, but we're just going to roll with what I got today. So at number 10, we have Andrew East and Sean Johnson, NFL long snapper and former U.S. gymnast. Uh, shout out. Um, and they have a daughter named Drew, but they just revealed that baby number two is a boy. They just had their gender reveal party and some cute pics came from that. So check out their Instagrams. Uh, at number nine, we have David and Victoria Beckham. Uh, David Beckham, world-renowned soccer star. And I just told Whitney today... 
I said, I did not know Victoria Beckham was a Spice Girl. And oh, I don't know. Oh, no. No. Is it, I, I know. I said, I don't know if it's because I'm like, young or like just uncultured but yes my mom was like are you kidding me Age. that's posh spice i was like okay and i was I-, I was telling abby i'm like in fifth grade like <laughs> talent show i was scary spice and the like spice girl lip sync but it's all good it's all good yep uh, you she learn was a, something new every you day do. Okay? posh spice big but deal they, spice girls are a big deal big yeah, deal okay. <laughs> i know their songs i just couldn't okay whatever anyway it's cool. so they just spent easter with all four of their kids yesterday and victoria was very happy to do that um she posted on her instagram Instagram and quoted it our family together is the most precious gift this Easter so that was super sweet nice. um at number eight we have Megan Rapinoe and Sue Bird so between the two huh. I, l- let me just okay so Megan FIFA Women's World Cup champion and Olympic gold medalist and Sue is a Seattle Storm player for the WNBA who has won three WNBA championships and four Olympic gold medals Wow. Huh? I mean, (laughs) more hardware than you can find in most homes. Yeah. And, you know, they're both advocates for women's equality, especially in sport. Rapinoe is all over the place um, speaking out Mm. on the issues and trying to fight for women's equality. And then Sue Bird just started a company highlighting women's sports called Together with Chloe Kim, Simone Manuel, and Alex Morgan. Big fans of theirs. Big fans. So power couple right there for sure at uh, number seven Russell Wilson and Sierra had to NFL QB and singer um, they were actually at the Stanford Louisville basketball game cheering on Russell's sister Anna Wilson um, who plays for Stanford and shout out to Stanford who won the one, natty last night um, for so, uh, that was their first NCAA women's basketball title since 92 Wow I believe Stanford yeah. always rocking to the top, not only in academics, but also in yeah, athletics. Check that out. And um, so Sierra just posted some uh, pretty bomb pictures on Instagram that actually Russell took. What? <laughs> he was hyping her up and uh, they had to remind everybody that they're still up there. Her, her <laughs> post baby body snapback I game. I mean. I, I'm just letting you know it don't work like that for everybody. <laughs> Let me tell you, it don't yeah. look like that for everybody. You know, yeah, I don't, well, I don't know what she's doing, but it's a snapback. Looks good, uh huh. And number six, Dwayne Wade and Gabrielle Union, former NBA star and the actress. Um, they're great stars in their perspective fields, but I mean, their TikToks. Their TikTok their is TikToks. on new levels. And Hallie, we were talking about that earlier. I crack up. They pop up on my for you page when I'm scrolling, procrastinating <laughs> on TikTok. And uh, they're just, they're hilarious. So check that, check out their TikTok. If you and their laugh. baby girl, their daughter oh. is like, I mean, just loads of personality. Oh, she's in the TikTok. Oh, I, they, they attitude make sure to put and all. Her in there. I love oh, it. Oh, yeah. At number five, we have J-Lo and A-Rod. So there was some um, questions Stuff. on whether <laughs> that was still a power couple. And I will tell you, they are working things out. All right. Okay. They were engaged. I don't think they are anymore, but J-Lo is filming a movie in the Dominican Republic and A-Rod flew out and there are paparazzi pictures of them cuddling and like Canoodling. being romantic. Yeah, there Trying you go. To f- working work. on it. Yes, they're working on it and it looks like it's working. So there is hope. No one give up yet. <laughs> At number four, you got Steph and Aisha Curry. Um, the couple actually met when they were 15 and 14, mm. but they didn't start dating until like years later and... Now they have three beautiful kids, and they were actually just guests on Sesame Street um, promoting healthy eating habits. You know, Aisha's a cook, so she th- that goes hand in hand. But yeah, I think that's important. You Aisha, know, have us out. We, we'd love to come out yeah. to uh, to the West Coast for Yo, a little dinner, lunch, for maybe. Sure, you know, for sure, <laughs> Chef Curry. We, 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 we peep the game on Instagram. Let's Looks go. good. Yeah, it does look good. And number three, we have JJ Watt and Clea Ohai. J.J. Watt is my favorite football player ever. My Jeep is actually named after J.J. Watt. Fun fact. Um, He was DE for the Texans, just went to the Cardinals, so I guess I'm a Cardinals fan now. Need a New Jersey dad. You heard that. Okay. Um, They actually just got married in the Bahamas in February, um, and they're doing great, and they support each other like... No it other. All. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're awesome. He reminds folks all the time that she's not just his fiance, but that she has a legitimate career and oh, has yes. done so much on her own. He I've... advocates for, for women's sports, too. He I mean, does. He, he does remind people that, that don't see her as my side piece. Like, no. She's got her own career. She is it. She yeah. is. She's the mainstay. Love Pretty it. Good. 
At number two, we have Drew and Brittany Breeze. I might be a little biased here, but I mean, come on. Former Saints quarterback. I hate that I have to say former. Aww. Breaks my heart. But um, they are a power couple. The two met at Purdue and have since had four kids. They dated all through college, all through the all the injuries and whatever. Um but the kids, the kids, I will say, <laughs> I've been in post-game press conferences when those kids, especially the boys, I don't uh-huh. think I've ever seen his daughter, Ryland, but the boys are character. I mean, <laughs> they, they are running are, Newman School. <laughs> yo, yes. They are running around the press conference and, and just making jokes. I mean, they would have all the media cracking up in the middle of these press conferences. They are hoots they're awesome but you know drew and Brittany are really good parents and they're not just good parents they're great advocates for the city of new orleans and for all that they've done for like the the morale yeah and it's just they've they have made a huge difference down there and, and they'll continue to do it absolutely. i mean you're even just well, seeing as they're starting to move into that next phase much like you know coach yeah. bro's moving into that yeah. i can see them becoming ambassadors politics. yes you know well, and i mean said, he well, said he's not he New Orleans is it's, in his it's heart. home. He's not, yeah, he's not going anywhere. So. Once you drink the water, you can't mm-hmm. go back. Yeah, and number <laughs> who's number one? one? Rob Gronkowski uh, and Camille Costic. I mean, that couple is something else. Um, Tampa Bay Bucks tight end, aka Gronk, and Sports Illustrated model and yeah. former NFL cheerleader um, Camille Costic. She was actually in the stands having a couple beers during the Super Bowl, and she said. That she and Rob made a deal that if he won a soup, another Super Bowl, um, they'd get a French Bulldog. So they actually did just add a, fa- uh, a new member to their family. His name is Ralphie G. Yeah. Um, and they love their dog so much. And actually, so Gronk is one of the most well-known players in the NFL, but not just for being a good um, football player, but for his personality. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if you know, but a couple years ago with the Lombardi, he tried to bunt. A baseball. He, they oh. were at a baseball game, and he bunted a baseball, and it dented the trophy. I'm not sure. He's no longer allowed <laughs> to hold the trophy. He's no longer allowed to hold he, it. He, I guess uh, Gronk nor Tom Brady, because uh, yeah, Tom, uh, Tom likes to throw the Lombardi off, trophy. Off boats. Okay, so, yeah. off boats on, onto a other similar boats. similar pattern, pattern there. <laughs> um, but... Both really great people. Camille is looked up to by a lot of a lot of women and girls because she encourages women to embrace themselves and to love themselves, flaws and all, and just go after what they want. She's got a hashtag called Never Never Not Dancing, and she'll post videos of her dancing anywhere, everywhere. They're just a really fun couple with good vibes and promote that that good energy and and encouragement and we need that we need that and i and i actually follow the dog on instagram because his stories and his life looks pretty interesting Uh, compared to mine that dog for a day (laughs) literally right but you know i got some honorable mentions of course Uh, patrick mahomes and Brittany matthews who just had their first kid alex morgan and servando carrasco alex is one of the women who is um a part of together and Serena Williams and Alexis Ohanian, who I just found out he was the Reddit co-founder. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. so he's a big dog in the tech world. Yeah. So that wraps up the 10 power couples in sports, uh, powered by gridiron. Um, like I said, there were a lot and it was so hard to pick, but this is what I got. This is what you so got. I hope everybody enjoyed it. We got a top 10 and we're going to continue <laughs> to find fun ways to yeah. keep the, like to keep the vibe light and to keep it fun here on the gridiron show. Cause like Absolutely. we've always said, we're not just here for chalk talk. We certainly right. want to inspire. We want to motivate. We want to celebrate and we want to have some fun while we're doing it. And that wraps up another edition wow. of the gridiron show. Another show in the books. Want to give a big thank you for everybody out there that continues to tune in and follow us on this journey. We're growing, we're learning, we're getting better every day, you know, and sometimes we're facing obstacles that we continue to have to try to fight through and to overcome. I, um, I've been open with our team that I've been experiencing some health issues and some challenges and, you know, but one thing that was without question was that waking up this morning and coming here was the, was the, was the bright spot of what I was excited and looking forward to this week. So as always, you can catch us on the Jordy Collab of show every Wednesday for Women Crush Wednesday, where we will also tell you about what to expect on the next episode of Grit Iron Show, which drops on Monday. So on behalf of Abby, Hallie, Sarah here in the room, along with Lord Courtney and the entire Jordy Collada Show team, 
Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the Grit Iron Show. Big thank you also to Coach Dee Dee Bro for joining yeah. us. And we will be back at it again with a new episode on Monday. You guys stay great out there. <laughs>